So I can't deny holding a small amount of skepticism tonight while taking my seat at a theater in Chofu, Tokyo to see Suzume no Tojimari, the new film by popular anime auteur Shinkai Makoto. Shinkai is the director behind various modern classics of the anime medium, most notably the breakout global phenomenon Your Name, Kimi no Nawa. Like many the world over, I'm a major admirer of that film and have strong memories associated with other Shinkai fare. Like the highly bittersweet 2007 peon to long distance relationships, 5 centimeters per second. Sadly, I've also been left cold by Shinkai before, his themes most often revolving around Japanese high schoolers experiencing long distance and separation, whether physical or temporal, can be a bit repetitive. When his movies connect emotionally, they tend to be home runs, but I've also found myself struggling to connect with about half of his catalog. That was true even before Your Name became one of the most successful anime films of all time, and in fact, the most successful anime film on the global stage. And the indie-oriented Shinkai became seemingly locked into producing more easily accessible romance adventures. See, Shinkai broke into long-form anime by writing, animating, and directing the short anime film Voices from a Distant Star all by himself, creating the film entirely on his Power Mac G4. He even voiced one of the principal characters. His previous film to our current film today, 2019's Weathering With You, Tenki no Ko, was thoroughly Shinkai. Breathtakingly beautiful, it featured the realistic but enhanced verisimilitude his movies are known for. It also fell far short of the emotional or structural success seen in Your Name, despite clearly trying to replicate that same atmosphere. So I went into Suzume no Tojimari ready for more of the same. A beautiful but passable film. What I got instead was one of the most exciting anime films I've seen in years. Yoko so mina, and welcome back to Unseen Japan. I'm happy to be joining you again today with a look into the newest, biggest anime film in Japan, Shinkai Makoto's Suzume no Tojimari. As always, I'm Noah Oskow, and I figured since this movie won't be available overseas for a while yet, that people might appreciate hearing a bit about it in a non-spoiler specific fashion. If you do appreciate it, subscribe for more and consider giving the video a like. Oh, and our Patreon is linked below too. We have a few Unseen Japan announcements uh, coming up, and you can hear those at the end of the video, but for the time being, let's get back to the world behind the doors of Suzume. <sighs> Suzume no Tojimari, literally Suzume's door locking, begins amidst a picturesque port town in rural Miyazaki Prefecture, Kyushu. Immediately, one gets the sense that we're dealing with another of Shinkai's many pet themes, that of the center versus the periphery. Your Name also directly compared life in the metropolis of Tokyo against a countryside backdrop, and the use of local dialect reminds the viewer of that film's protagonist, Mitsuha, and her life in a rural town. High schooler Iwato Suzume, our titular protagonist, is riding her bike down a steep incline, the bay glittering in front of her when she notices a long-haired, attractive man walking in her direction. She's immediately taken with his looks. The man, who we later learn is named Sota, stops her to ask if there might be any abandoned parts of town nearby. He's looking after a certain door. When Suzume directs him towards the ruins of an older settlement in the mountains behind the town, she becomes involved in a quest to find similar doors throughout Japan. Doors behind which lurk seismic, unholy dangers from a place humans are not meant to tread. I went into this movie without watching a single full trailer and avoided knowing too much about it beforehand. The initial Kyushu backdrop was enough to pique my interest, despite what looked like the standard Shinkai meet cute replete with mildly uncomfortable age differences. I am also a fan of Japanese films that deal in a meaningful way with areas outside of the great metropoles. That's one of the reasons I enjoyed Ghibli's 1993 Shikoku set Ocean Waves that's Kikueru, so much, for example. The movie goes further into its theme than any of Shinkai's other works, with its main viewpoint character being an inakamono, a country bumpkin, who proceeds to take a journey across Japan by ferry, Vespa, car, and Shinkansen. 
the countryside theming goes further than bucolic depictions or voice acted dialects. In Suzume no Tojimari, the source of danger emerges from doors left in abandoned, depopulated spaces. A deserted school building, a ghostly theme park, a desolate town left to nature. The imagery rings true to anyone who's lived in or spent any real time in the vast stretches of Japan beyond its biggest metros. Japan's rural areas are experiencing rapid depopulation. For seven decades, Japan's population has centered more and more around major urban spaces. By 2015, 51.9% of the whole of the Japanese population was to be found in only the three most populous metropolitan regions, those surrounding Tokyo, Osaka, and Nagoya. Japan's population as a whole is in steep decline, which only furthers the issue of the hollowing out of rural spaces. As rural populations shrink, their communities face a number of issues. According to scholar Bridget Love, remaining residents struggle with logistics of decline, the care of elderly, the upkeep of vacant homes and land, encroaching forests, shrinking budgets for municipal snow plowing, and closing schools. Rural depopulation and the resulting breakdown of communities is one of the most pressing issues in Japan today. For long decades, the potential ramifications of population decline have weighed on the minds of many in this country. Now we're beginning to face the reality of just how bad the population has become. In 2022, for example, 65 new municipalities fell into the government's official depopulated category. Among these, 36 of these are considered wholly depopulated. Suzume no Tojimari touches on this clear and present crisis as few popular films have. The issue of rural abandonment isn't only one of statistics and breakdown of services, it's an emotional loss as well. Whole communities disappear with few remaining to remember them. People have the option of slowly watching their towns and villages hollow out or leaving themselves. A third option, pressing for revitalization, does exist and has found some success in various communities in Japan. In Suzume no Tojimari, Shinkai portrays the detrius of memory in abandoned spaces as the pathway to spiritual breakdown. Doors left behind, unlocked, are a pathway for the otherworldly to enter and wreak chaos. Perhaps even more than Miyazaki or Takahata or Hosoda Mamoru of Summer Wars Wolf Children fame, who is likely the most popular active theatrical anime director beside Shinkai, all of these being animation directors who focus on the minute details when presenting a lived-in, lifelike Japan, Shinkai seems to have the desire to portray capital J Japan. This is another film where fictionalized versions of Shinto concepts play a major role, and which beautifies Japan and laments its very real rural breakdown. Miyazaki and Takahata have both presented deep portrayals of Shintoist concepts, or at least the versions of them that you would see on screen in anime and other media, and Japanese folklore, with Spirited Away, Totoro, and especially Takahata's Pompoko all being standouts. But they also critique Japanese society in a way Shinkai doesn't seem to. Shinkai laments the tragedies that strike the country, depopulation, natural disasters, and chronic loneliness, without as obviously making a political statement about them. It's part of what sets him apart, but also makes his recent films feel perhaps a bit more poppy than the films of Miyazaki or Takahata. Indeed, Shinkai and Hosoda are invariably compared to Miyazaki and Ghibli as a whole. Sometimes this seems unfair, although their work does occupy a similar space as artistically rich and comparatively emotionally mature popular family fair, featuring Japanese societal verisimilitude. Shinkai, though, at least did earn direct comparisons once with his painfully derivative Children Who Chase Lost Voices, where that movie went so far as to ape Miyazaki's camera angles in an attempt to replicate that Ghibli feel, Suzume is thankfully all Shinkai. Shinkai has stated that Miyazaki and Ghibli are some of his biggest influences, and a few moments in this film still play tribute to Ghibli, especially Arlie. 
The music stings when the massive worms from the world beyond first appear sound an awful lot like those used by composer Hisaishi Jo when the Tatarigami, the cursed gods, made their appearances in Princess Mononoke. And in fact, I would go as far as to say that the worms share a lot in common with the gelatinous maroon worms infesting the cursed gods in Mononoke, and even more so with that film's undead Nightwalker. And the musical nods actually go even farther than that, directly sampling a famous song used in a Ghibli film that's even more famous than the song itself, and then having the characters comment on the song's Ghibli connection. So Suzume is distinctly Shinkai in styling and full of meaningful theming, but while compelling themes are good to have, they alone do not make a movie enjoyable. Hosoda's recent Bell had some intriguing themes regarding privacy and fame in the digital age, but UJ watchers may recall that I didn't really enjoy it all that much. What's great about Suzume is that it has consistent themes set to a rollicking road trip story with endearing characters complete with some real thrills along the way. The movie also simply looks better than Bell and many modern anime films. Unlike Hosoda's recent offerings, it doesn't rely on obvious CG models to populate crowd scenes. The animation is as vibrant and fluid as ever, a true testament to the staying power of 2D animation. Although I will admit that after my initial review came out on Unseen Japan of this film, uh, some kind Twitter users pointed out that there is some blatant CGI crowd usage uh, in specifically scenes set in Tokyo. That animation is used to great effect in bringing Suzume's memorable cast of characters to life. The primary pair, Suzume and Sota, may not quite light the world on fire like your names Mitsuha and Taki did, but they're extremely likable. You really want to see them succeed. Each of the rest of the vast cast features in only brief sections of the film based upon location, but all are personable, more than your average stock anime characters. I really don't mean to keep on making fun of Belle, but the comparison here I think is apt. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 It's just night and day in terms of how memorable and likable these characters actually are. These background characters also embody the localities they hail from, their lines of work so representative of different subsections of Japanese society. And amazingly, the movie even has cute mascot characters that are endearing without being obnoxious. And that alone is pretty much a miracle. I get no kick from champagne. So, as far as I'm concerned, this movie pretty much has it all. Enjoyable pacing, real tension, a fantastic world of Shinto-derived fantasy that overlaps thematically with the issues facing modern Japan, and characters that you actually care about. I haven't even touched on much of the dramatic aspects of the plot, which are honestly gripping, often leaving me feeling fear for both the characters and for Japan as a whole. I'd actually hazard to say that this is my favorite anime film I've seen in theaters since uh, let's be honest, Your Name in 2016. I'd be interested to watch Your Name and Suzume no Tojimari back to back, and I have a feeling that Your Name is still all around the better constructed film, but there are aspects here that I actually prefer. As far as pop anime goes, I'm not minding that Shinkai has left his indie days behind, not when we can get the occasional film as good as Suzume no Tojimari. Oh, and a girl falls in love with a sentient chair. I get no kick from champagne Okay, Mina, thanks for tuning in. Oh, brother! No! God! I was really surprised by just how much I enjoyed this movie, and felt it warranted a video review. Meanwhile, the big history video essay we've been promising is still being worked on. This has been the busiest month since getting back to Japan for me, and that video is looking to be perhaps the longest I've done so far, so it's taking a while. I do have some time off coming up soon, so I'm gonna try to gumbado my way through it once uh, that time comes. In more general UJ news, we've started up our Discord again. If you want to discuss Japan-related or adjacent topics and beyond, come join in. I'm around there a bit myself as well. So far we have over 1,000 members, and would love to have you included in our ranks. 
Same goes for Patreon, where you can support everything we do here on YouTube and beyond, complete with perks like early video access and dozens of member-only essays and articles, including a few I'd actually consider uh, among my best. Alright, back to the grind. Be seeing you soon, and in the meantime, hope you're all doing well. Mata